Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining my talk. I'm Balan Yado. And today I'm going to talk about a new attack technique that I found, which is called AI package hallucination. Uh, this technique using generative AI tools like ChatGPT in order to spread malicious packages. But first, let me introduce myself. As I said, my name is Balan Yado. Today I'm working at, as a security researcher at Lasso Security, which is a company that provides an end-to-end -end security solutions for the LLM era. I'm a NOS contributor. In the past six years, I used to hack and research many fields in the security area, like application, mobile security, uh, supply chains, and today I focus on LLM. Before I restart the talk, I just want to thank to Vulcan Cyber for the opportunity to perform this research while working there, and to Tal Kaysman and Yair Devinsky for helping me during it. So let's start. Generative AI is the fastest growing technology ever. I mean, only ChatGPT itself got 100 million users in less than two months. I mean, it's faster than any other app, any other technology. In my opinion, the evolution of the generative AI and the LLM is the biggest thing that happened since the establishment of the internet. And it's much more bigger than the establishment of the cloud. But with this great power of these tools comes some great vulnerabilities. Here we can see the new OS top 10 for LLM. And we can find here some new vulnerabilities like prompt ejection, which is one of the most popular subjects uh, for LLM security here now these days. We can always find some papers that publish how they bypass the ChatGPT prompts and succeed to make it uh, to generate some malicious code or just uh, generative Windows CDKs and so on. From the other hand, we can see uh, some familiar vulnerabilities like insecure output handling, which talks about uh, that uh, using uh, handling the output of the, these models insecurely could lead us to XSS, CSRF, SSRF, which are vulnerabilities that we know how to handle. But in my opinion, one of the most interesting topics in this host top 10 is the over-reliance one. Because this is the first time that hosts actually talk not just about the system itself, but about the people that are using it. And it's a big change. But it wasn't like this since the first day of um, this OS top 10. In the, in the first version, the beta one, they just said that depending on the LLM generated content without oversight, it could lead to harmful consequences. I mean, it almost says nothing, right? In the second version, they start using the word hallucination. They almost get into the point. They start talking about legal issues and reputational damage. But still, it's not the right words. In the next version, until, and until the last one, it's kept the same. And here, they finally find the right words, as I see it. Systems or people that using LLM content without fact-checking it, could it could lead for misinformation, and not just for legal issues like before, but also to security vulnerabilities. Now, this is a big change of how OSP sees vulnerabilities. So I said the word hallucinations many times until now, but what is LLM hallucination? So it's pretty simple. It's all the wrong, fake, and made up answers that we're receiving from these models. And I have a lot of funny uh, examples and some weird ones, but I don't have time to show them. So I jumped into the most interesting one, which is when these models just making up facts. On the screen, we can see an example that I asked ChatGPT, how can I get some data from Orca API? For those who don't know, Orca is one of the biggest cloud security providers. So I asked how I can get some data from their API, and I received this URL. I mean, from first look, it seems to be a legit one, right? API.orca.security. So try to access it. And found that there is, no, there is no URL like that. 
I mean, there is no DNS, there is no such thing, and it means that JetGPT just hallucinated and made up a URL that doesn't exist. So why does it happen? I mean, why these great, these great tools that almost does anything that we ask from it, why does it wrong and making up answers? So I won't deep dive too much for how this model works, but I will split my answer into three main reasons. The first one is that these models are probabilistic models. And the probabilistic behavior of these models, which are basing their output using our input, sometimes leads to those mistakes. The second reason is that these models were trained about huge amount of data from all over the internet. Now, this data could contain some incomplete data, some wrong data, or just even some old data that is no longer relevant for these days. The last reason is that the application, which based on these models, were programmed to be creative and trying always to provide us answers. Now, we can see that in when we are trying to ask ChatGPT the exactly same question over and over again, and we are receiving from it different answers. So after covering the first part of my research, the first subject of my research, let's talk about the second uh, subject, supply chain attacks. Supply chain attacks is one of the growing attack vector in the, la in the last years. We can see in the numbers how they dr dramatically increase then from year to year. And attacker using many ways uh, for supply chain attacks. One of the main ways they are using is spreading malicious packages. They are using many techniques from typo squatting, masquerading, uh, Trojan package, and so on, in order to do so. So after talking about these two subjects, let's talk about my research and the new attack technique. This new attack technique is combining these two, new, two words, the hallucination and the supply chain, in order to spread malicious packages using those hallucinations. Let's see how this technique works. The technique is split into two, two parts. The first part is when the attacker is actually do something, and the second part is when he's just waiting for the victim to get into the picture. So in the first part, we have three components, the attacker, ChatGPT, and the package repository. The attacker will ask a coding question, ChatGPT, and he will ask for packages that could help him solve this question. ChatGPT in response will provide him a non-existing package. All the attacker have to do now is just publish a malicious package with that name that ChatGPT gave them. That's it. Simple as that. Now, the victim will get into the picture, and he will ask a similar question. Now, the similar word here is really important because the victim does not need to ask the exactly same question as the attacker asks. And this is what makes this attack to exploitable one than just a theoretical one. So the victim asks a similar question, and ChatGPT now will answer it with the same hallucinated package. Just in this time, the package will be exist, and it will be malicious. Now, we know that developers like to trust these tools, just like they were trusting Stack Overflow and copy paste from there. So, developer, uh, so the developer will install the malicious package, and it's kind of a game over. But it could be even worse. I mean, if the attacker will combine this spreading technique with another one, like Trojan package, and will make this package a functional one, the developer might use this package and deploy it to our production systems. And then the attacker will not just have a foothold on the computer of the developer, but it, it, will, be, it will have a foothold on our production systems. So before I share with you a pr proof of concept, I would like to share quickly the research process. So the first part was validating the thesis. I mean, we, what we try to find is the first package hallucination to verify that it exists. So after a few questions, it, really, it was a matter of, of minutes until we find 
the first package hallucination. So, and then we ask a few more questions, and then we find another one, and then another one. And then uh, we chose to start collecting more questions. So we go to Stack Overflow and collected question from above 40 subjects in Node.js and Python. And after collecting them, we started uh, question OpenAI API, which is the API for uh, which is the API for ChatGPT. So we start asking those questions, uh, and then we collected all the session, and we needed to extract it, all the unexisting packages. So in order to, to extract all the unexisting packages, we have needed to extract all the packages from the, from the chat answers, and then we checked in front of the relevant uh, package repository if the package exists or not. If it was exist, so fine. We don't have what to do with it. But if it doesn't exist, so it means that we can use this uh, name in order to upload the malicious package. So the next part is uploading the malicious package. Now, we didn't really upload the malicious one, and we didn't upload all the packages that we found. We just used few ones in order to prove our concept. And here comes the last part, and the most important one. And I will explain. In this part, we try to verify that the repetitiveness of the hallucinations. What we did here, we asked some different questions on the same subjects from different users, from different IPs, to validate it's not biased, and to see that we are receiving the exactly same hallucinated package. Now, the reason that this is the most important part of the research is because if in this part I, would, I wouldn't receive the same hallucinated package, all the other part was worth nothing. Because if I'm receiving this, the hallucinated package only once, it means that I can't attack with it and I can't do with it nothing. So in this part, we asked this question and we found that we are receiving the same, the exactly same hallucinated package for different questions. So, and then we have found that, then we understand that we found new attack technique. Now, let's see a, lo a short POC. So, the first step of the POC is asking a question in the, attack, in the attacker context. So, here we ask how to integrate with ArangoDB in Node.js and to give it uh, the answer with the pattern of NPM install. And the first answer was just use ArangoJS. Now, ArangoJS is probably the best answer to give. I mean, ArangoJS is the best package to use with ArangoDB in Node.js. But what happened when I asked for more packages to do it? The first answer was just use ArangoDB. Now, I go and check if ArangoDB exists, and I found that it's not. So of course, the next part will be upload, and here it is. Now ArangoDB is a, pa is a package that exists. Everyone can download it, and it's a malicious one. Here comes the interesting part. Asking a similar question in the context of the user. Now, here we can see that I didn't ask a similar question. I asked a totally different question. I asked it to write Node.js code to connect with a RangoDB. I even have a typo and just wrote Rango and ask for three NPM packages to do it. And here we can see that in the second place, here is our hallucinated package, a RangoDB. Yeah, but if that's not impressed you and you said, yes, but it's only the second place and I will always use only the first recommendation. So look what's happened when I ask Bar the same question. When I ask Bar the, same, the exactly same question, I received a RangoDB in the first place and with a, code, with a functional code to use. And if that's not enough, look what it said. It said that a RangoDB is the official RangoDB driver to use in, in, uh, in Node.js. It's a well-maintained one and have a large community of users. I'm pretty sure that if I received this recommendation before I found this attack technique, I probably use it. So the user will install, and it's a game over. So now let's talk about the results of the research. 30% of the questions that we ask, we received at least one hallucinated package in the responses. We asked almost 430 questions, and we received 
in more, for, in more than 120 hallucinated package, uh, answers with at least one hallucinated package. Now, this is a huge number. I mean, if an attacker will perform a, um, a spreading campaign with thousands or hundreds of thousands of questions, he could spread thousands of malicious packages to our ecosystem that ChatGPT will recommend on. The last question that we stayed with is how we stay safe? I mean, how we protect ourselves from this kind of attack? So my first, sorry, my first recommendation will be just don't trust blindly these tools yet. I mean, the hallucinations are still there. Some of the packages are still receiving them. I checked, I checked it before uh, three weeks ago, something like that. And some of the packages, I still receive them. And some of them, I didn't find them, but I found new ones. So hallucinations are still there. We, this is lead me to the next bullet. When you are receiving an answer from these models that you are not 100% sure that it's right, just perform cross-checking with an external source that you are trusting it. It's important. My last recommendation will be use open source sec software securely, regardless to LLM, but especially with it. If you are receiving a recommendation about package that you are not familiar with, so go to the package repository and check it. Check the publish date. I mean, if the publish date is later than the, training the la latest training data date of the model, it will be weird if it's recommending you about something it doesn't know. Check the, co uh, check the commits, check the maintainers, check how well maintained the package is. Maybe it's a legit one, but not well maintained and holds vulnerabilities, so you don't want to use it. Check the stars, comments, number of downloads, and if you are seeing there something suspicious, just think twice before you're downloading it. Thank you very much. I don't know if there is time for questions, so. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, sadly, we don't have time for questions anymore, but uh, surely after the event. Uh, sure, feel free to contact me. I will be around. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank Bar. you.